June 17th, 1789. This was the first gathering of the Third Estate. They called themselves the National Assembly. Who was the Third Estate, you may ask? Workers, artisans, and peasants who were unfairly taxed in comparison to the other wealthier estates. The Third Estate revolted, and this was the beginning of the French Revolution. The Tennis Court Oath was one of the most influential events in the French Revolution because it sparked other events and had an impact militarily on the government and in democracy. Life before the revolution was immensely hard for the Third Estate, which was made up of the bourgeoisie, artisans, and peasants. About 98% of France's population was made up of the Third Estate. Out of that 98%, about 40% were peasant farmers. They were being taxed heavily by the king, even though they were already in debt. Most, but not all, members of the Third Estate were impoverished. There were a small percent who were able to live comfortably called the bourgeoisie. They were usually shopkeepers and business owners. But all of these small groups were part of the third estate. They were the backbone of society, but were not acknowledged at all. The second estate was wealthy nobles and aristocrats. They made up 2% of the population, owned 20% of the land, and held top jobs in government and military. The first estate was made up of religious leaders who were in charge of the church. They all were rich and lived like nobles. They advised the king and they paid no taxes. While these members of the third estate were working immensely hard on the fields and in the shops, the second and first estate just got to relax and enjoy their lavish lifestyle. At the top of this social pyramid was King Louis XVI and his wife, Marie Antoinette. King Louis XVI took the French throne in 1774, but proved to be an unsuitable leader. He failed with properly handling the financial problems inherited from his grandfather, King Louis XV. King Louis heavily supported the American Revolution because of his hatred towards Britain. This affected the country of France in a negative way because King Louis was now in debt after the war. On May 5, 1789, King Louis XVI calls a meeting of the Estates General to raise taxes. Then, just a month later on, June 17, the Third Estate declares itself the National Assembly to try and stop this madness. June 20th, 1789, another day in Versailles, France. Hundreds of men from the Third Estate, mostly from the bourgeoisie, were getting ready for another meeting with the other estates. But once they got to the meeting, things took a turn for the worse. <laughs> Third Estate soon realized King Louis locked them out of the meeting, but they wouldn't let this stop them. They didn't want the king and the other estates to have a debate about their rights like it was nothing. They ended up moving to an indoor tennis court known as the Salle des Juges de Poum in French. Silence! Silence! Faisons le serment, ici et maintenant, de ne jamais nous séparer et de nous rassembler partout où les circonstances l'exigent jusqu'à ce que nous ayons donné à la France une constitution.
Tennis court oath said they were not to separate and to reassemble wherever circumstances require until the Constitution of the Kingdom is established. Emmanuel Joseph Siais wrote the Tennis Court Oath, but he's also famous for his pamphlet, What is the Third Estate? These are two of his most famous quotes you may recognize. Is the Third Estate? Everything. What has it been hit throw in the political order? Nothing. What does it desire to be? Something. Gentlemen, we have a master. This young man does everything, can do everything, and will do everything. Jean Sava Bailey was the one who administered the oath. Most agreed that the tennis court oath was much needed. The oath was signed by 576 of the 577 members of the Third Estate who were locked out of the meeting of the Estates General. All but one man signed the oath, and that one man was Joseph Martin Dushk. And his reasoning was, I would only execute decisions made by the king. He was the only one still willing to stand for the king after he locked them out of the meeting. The tennis court oath had a profound impact on civil rights, especially the civil rights of the Third Estate. The Tennis Court Oath was the genesis of the Third Estate demanding equality. The Declaration of Rights of Man and of the Citizen followed the Tennis Court Oath. This declaration was written by Marquis de Lafayette, who was also a main contributor in the American Revolution. He served as a major general in the Continental Army under George Washington. Lafayette was an important link between America and the French. The declaration was adopted between August 20th and August 26th, 1789, by the National Assembly. This declaration was modified several times into different constitutions. The Constitution of 1795 was a more finalized one. This doctrine stated that men are both free and remain free and equal in rights. Other rights included were freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Major thinkers of the French Enlightenment influenced this document. Some of these thinkers were Montesquieu, who advocated for the separation of powers, and jean just Roscoff, who wrote the general will, which stated the state represents the general will of the citizens. This 1795 constitution came later in the history of the French Revolution. This tennis court oath helped spring such disclosure into action. Shortly after the tennis court oath, Bastille Day followed. Because King Louis rejected their idea of a constitution, the citizens of France had armed themselves to sever and uphold their oath to create a new constitution to represent the people and withhold more power to the people. After the fall of Ballista and many more breakouts and battles, years later, King Louis was forced to sign the constitution. Due to the success of the French Revolution and the Tennis Court Oath, many changes had taken place. One of the most important being the abolishment of the absolute monarchy and the implantation of a new constitutional monarchy. This was made to be governed by a monarch but controlled and checked by a parliament. This government system had created and encouraged a more democratic state in France and allowed for a reduced influence of the upper class and had increased the powers of the middle and lower class. The French Revolution had many lasting results. It unified and increased the power of the national state. It increased the feeling of French nationalism and it set a percent for the democratic French government. Although it did not solve class inequalities, the French Revolution led to a merge of the middle class. In conclusion, the Tennis Court Oath had a massive impact on the French Revolution. One success of the Tennis Court Oath was that it set the foundation for the Constitution of 1791. A failure was that King Louis disagreed with the idea of a constitution at first and rejected their request, leading the Third Estate to storming Palestine. The Tennis Court Oath ignited a desire for freedom and democracy within the hearts of the Third Estate, but the unfair government disapproved of their request. The French Revolution sprang into action.